Hey everyone, it's Todd the Cybertruck Truck Guy, and today I want to talk about why Tesla should give away full self-driving. I don't actually mean they give it away for free, but what I do mean is that they actually eliminate the idea of paying for full self-driving up front as a single charge. What we have is historically, Tesla's been charging full self-driving in order to help increase their revenue and essentially fund the full self-driving effort. But we're at a point now where with Tesla's profitability and stock that they don't actually really need to be charging in that particular way in order to get it. One of the things that I think is really problematic with charging that upfront fee is that unless you do it at the time you purchase the vehicle, you cannot finance it. And so what it does is it really depresses the ability of people following on to add full self-driving, which is why they're considering a subscription model. But I actually wanna go a step further and suggest that they should do a tiered subscription model that begins with free. What I think Tesla should do is that they should make full self-driving available and then it should get billed out on a per mile basis for everyone that has a Tesla and has the data service. I want to show you mathematically why I actually think this model is better and how it compares to the existing model. So, and since we're in the truck today, we're going with my state-of-the-art advanced graphics. Okay, so one of the things that we see with the existing system is that you have North America at a much higher take rate. We are selling in this year, and I this is just approximate. I think we're gonna end up being, I think Tesla's gonna be somewhere around a million units sold. And I'm just splitting them up roughly approximately. North America could be a little high, China could be a little low, but you're, it's gonna illustrate the point. Okay, so North America, say they sell 600,000 units and they have the highest take rate at 25%. So they're selling 150,000 full self-driving packages. And then we have China, they're only around 1%. So that's only about 3,000. And then other Europe and all the other places, I have that at 100,000. And that number is somewhere around 10%. I've heard as high as 15. So what does that mean? This is what that looks like in a revenue, from a revenue perspective, 150,000 taken at 10,000 each, that's 1.5 billion. And then 3,000 at 10,000 each is 30 million. And then 10,000 at 10,000 each is 100 million. So you have a total of 1.6 billion. But the problem with this is, it only happens one time. They get this 1.6 billion and that's it. The other problem, like I said before, is you have 85, 90% of the vehicles that are out there where people can't or won't be able to use full self-driving. I've heard people talk about the subscription idea and people throwing out numbers like $200 a month. I think people are gonna be very resistant to doing something that's $200 a month in terms of a subscription. And I believe they should approach this from a bottom-up method, making full self-driving available to anyone that has an FSD-capable vehicle, but then changing the per mile rate as their subscription number goes up. When I'm talking about tiered-based subscription plan, let me give you an example. And again, you're gonna be astonished at the graphics quality. Kinda like how it, I sort of drift upward i got a little bit of a smudge there i think it brings a degree of gritty reality to this i also think it highlights my third grade level penmanship so the concept is basically this we've got 1.9 million people that haven't subscribed to fsd and they still haven't purchased their tesla yet coming into this year so that's the base of potential people that could benefit from this new subscription model essentially what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to lower the barrier of entry to get people to use FSD, trying to leverage the fact that FSD is out there on every vehicle. But then what I'm doing is I'm offering incentives at different tiers for people to commit to a higher monthly minimum 
to get a lower FSD per mile charge. And the reason I think this is so important is while Elon believes FSD has a value of 30,000 or 40,000 or 50,000, the reality is it's only valuable to people that will use the vehicle in that way. So you have all this hardware out there and all these people that are going, well, it doesn't really make sense for me because I'm not gonna use it in that way. This gives everyone access to utilize FSD without the obligation of making some big commitment, but it, it drives people to increase their monthly commitment. So really, that's this column here. So this is a monthly minimum amount. So the first tier is zero, then it goes 25, 75, and $200 per month. So that would, the idea with that is that's a minimum. Your miles, say uh, for that year, would get billed against that minimum. And then if you go over the minimum, you'd pay an additional charge. If you take the 1.9 million, you say 50%, we're gonna put in that free tier or zero monthly commitment tier. 25%, we're gonna put in the recreational level tier. Then this 15% I would say are like hardcore, you know, power users, people that have long commutes, people that take a lot of trips, and maybe even people that are using their vehicle for things like Uber. And then the last 10% would be commercial. Again, FSD isn't enabled yet. It can't, we can't do robo taxi yet, but these are the people that are using it on a much higher mileage basis. And once FSD becomes available, these people, this would be the plan. They would get the commercial plan. Now I'm gonna make the case after I go through all this math that I think Tesla should stop selling FSD is a one-time thing. I think that's a bad model. I know they did it because they needed a higher amount of revenue before, but they're not in a situation where they need to do that anymore. And I think this is a much more sustainable, much more strategically valuable way for them to approach FSD. If we've got, you know, here's the different user, 950,000, 475, 285, 190 in commercial. We have our different minimums or different rates. And then I have estimated different miles for them. Let me show you what that means in terms of revenue. You got 950,000 people this year. Say, hey, I'll do the trial basis is here. I'll pay out 50 cents per mile of FSD. If you have 950,000 people times 1,000 miles, that's 950 million miles. At 50 cents a mile, that's 475 million. Current FSD revenue predicted if nothing changed for this year is 1.6 billion. If you just get all these free users to just do a thousand miles at 50 cents a mile, you've, you've gotten a third of the way there. So then these are the people, the $25 per month minimum. And in exchange for committing to that, you get 25 cents a mile. So those people use it 5,000 miles a year. And if they do that, that's 2.3 billion miles at 25 cents a mile, 593 million. Here's the power users, smaller percentage of the group. They're getting a lower rate because they're committing to a higher amount per month. And they're at 641 million than the commercial users. And this is the one right now that you might get a lot of these people going into this group until full self-driving is legal and, and we can actually do robo taxis. But as you can see here, even if all those miles got moved into this group, your revenue would still be more using this per mile basis. I don't think charging one time is the best way to do it because guess what? Under this model, you get all this money next year plus all the new drivers that have signed up for it. So now all of a sudden you have this recurring revenue base that goes up year after year after year. People aren't having to rationalize a $10,000 number because they're able to adjust their cost based on their actual usage. And now you have the killer app for automobiles. That's the economics of why it's beneficial today. But if you look at some of the most valuable companies out there, Netflix, Google, Facebook, uh, a large amount of their value is driven from either free or subscriber base. So free stuff that brings traffic or subscriber base recurring revenue. Subscriber base recurring revenue is worth 
two to three times that same revenue versus one-time purchases or more. And the one thing that people have looked at in the world of automotive is how do you actually get this recurring revenue model to work for transportation for Tesla? Using full self-driving as the killer app that drives recurring revenue would revolutionize Tesla and the market overall. If Tesla can demonstrate that they can do FSD and they can make that FSD technology available to other automakers at no cost, the cost will be borne by the end user's actual use of the product. You've just done two amazing things. Number one, you've quadrupled, no, you it's like you've 20 x their opportunity to capitalize on their FSD technology. And you've given a bunch of automakers a pathway to incorporating FSD into their architecture without having to try and solve it themselves or hire an expensive third party. This means Tesla puts themselves in a position to at least be the FSD technology provider for all EVs, or they could leverage that into becoming the, uh, a vehicle operating system for the bulk of the vehicles that are gonna be built on EV platforms. Now, I'm confident that there's gonna be some other competing solutions that arrive and that Tesla won't just have free reign, but for a period of time, call it a year, call it two years, call it three years, once FSD becomes approved, they could go out and they could start negotiating and executing licenses with other OEMs in order to put their FSD and vehicle operating system technology into their vehicles at different levels. I mean, you can start to see this could be massive because suddenly instead of just the Tesla operating system being only on Teslas, now suddenly they not only get recurring revenue from all the other vehicles out there, but they also get the ability to become an operating system to, to vend infotainment products and other products through to other auto users without them having to be Tesla clients. I mean, basically all the leverage sits with Tesla if they solve FSD and they need a model that isn't everybody's gotta pay 10 grand to get this. And to me, the way you do this is make the, make the hardware free and make using it very low barrier of entry and just collect tolls perpetually. And now the other thing is we're not just depending on robo taxi. All these valuations that are out there that are having Tesla go to three trillion or four trillion or five trillion dollars in the next five years, they're all really counting on robo taxi. But if you can do FSD for the end user, as good as robo taxi potentially has the ability to be, you could see 2.1 billion in profit off of only 1.9 million vehicles annually. So then if Tesla sells another 2 million vehicles, they're gonna double that. So let's say they sell 2 million in 2022 and they double this. Uh, no, they would triple it. So 6 billion just in FSD revenue. Then all of a sudden they get their ride sharing robo taxi revenue online, that's great. But then all of a sudden, let's say they execute a deal with an OEM, with Volkswagen, with Toyota, with Ford, with GM that says, hey, We've got FSD, it's approved, it's ready to go. We'll give you the hardware and the software for free. We'll split it 60-40 uh, or 70-30, and we'll split any uh, app income off of the uh, the infotainment system 50-50 or whatever. You know, something like what Apple does or Google does. The OEM suddenly, the legacy OEMs are like, oh, thank God, we've got FSD solved. And now, you're not just going, oh, Tesla's battery constrained or their manufacturing constrained. It's everywhere. All these different automakers are gonna be lining up to license and pay through the end user for FSD. Is now you don't have this big hurdle, $10,000 sitting in front of people. There's no hurdle. It's just pay for it as you use it. It's like when Microsoft had DOS, right? You had to deal with Microsoft. And so, and all of a sudden it gives, it gave them all this access to provide these other solutions because they had the killer app. 
the app everyone had to have. And for a period of time, however long that is, if Tesla can get FSD solved before anyone else, they shouldn't just use it to advance Tesla. They should use it to maximize their inroads into relationships with the other OEMs. So anyway, that's it for today. Catch you next time. Bye.